Weld Symbols, Fillet Welds, Part 1, Gary Pace, PE, CWI, December 2018. Acknowledgements. Like pretty much everything I've done in regards to my YouTube videos, I start with something from either the military or the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. I deconstruct it and then merge other things in or add my own take on it or whatever. So the base of this um, YouTube video is from Nuclear Regulatory Commission Introduction to Welding Technology and Codes course. So there's a whole section there on uh, fillet welds and welding symbols and all the different kinds of welding symbols. So that's where this came from. I added my take into it and then used a bunch of material from the military, um, TC9 welding theory and application, TM5-805-7 welding design procedures and inspection, Department of the Army, and then um, the reference for all weld symbols in North America pretty much is AWS 2.4 standard symbols for welding, brazing, and non-destructive testing. Here's just a list of um, recommended self-study books. Certification manual for welding inspectors, welding inspection handbook, standard welding terms and definitions. Great book to have, especially if you're planning on being a certified weld inspector. you got to be able to speak the language of the people that are doing it, both up the food chain as far as, you know, designers and you know professionals on that level and then the working professionals on the floor you need to be able to communicate effectively with them in regards to what needs to be done and standard symbols for welding brazing and non-destructive examination as I said in the previous slide this is a great um, document to have in your back pocket not literally figuratively but it's a great document to have access to for resolution of welding symbols for both people constructing the components on the shop floor or out in the field and for people designing the components in the you know the drafting room or the engineering departments this is a great resource to help everybody make sure everybody's playing on the same sheet of music The difference between weld symbol and welding symbol. A weld symbol indicates the type of weld, as shown here in the circle. We're going to do a, a V groove, a couple of V grooves, double bevel V grooves, double sided weld. And then our welding symbol is in blue. It's the whole thing. So the weld symbol just tells you what kind of weld you're going to do. It gives you the weld type. But a welding symbol gives you the whole meal deal. It could include finishing, grinding, which procedure to use, whatever. So welding symbol is a method of representing the weld on drawings. It includes supplementary information and consists of the following eight elements. We're going to beat these eight elements into the dirt, but just so you have it. Reference line, arrow, basic weld symbol, dimensions and other data, supplementary symbols, finishing symbols, tail, specifications, process, or other references. All of those pieces of information can go into a welding symbol. But a weld symbol, as shown here, circled in red, is just the weld symbol. Just what kind of weld it is. Is it a slot weld, plug weld, fillet weld, groove weld, any of the above, all of the above combined? That is the weld symbol. Welding symbol is all the other information. Do we need to grind it? Do we need a specification? What process? What information's in the tail? What dimensions? How big does this weld need to be? 
that is all information that's in a welding symbol. So I hope I've cleared that up without turning this into a who's on first, what's on second type situation. But kind of goes down that road when you're talking about welding symbol and weld symbol. So tried to kind of delineate it here with some circled items on the welding symbol so we could start out from ground zero with a good foundation of what the difference between a weld symbol is and a welding symbol. On this slide you can see all the different kinds of weld symbols that are out there. You've got you know bevels, square, scarf, J, flare V, flare bevel, fillet, plug, slot, stud, a whole slew of different types of weld symbols that you can put on a welding symbol. Um, the reference line is shown for illustrative purposes and then the symbol with the perpendicular leg shall have the perpendicular leg drawn on the left side of the symbol. Fillet, bevel, J, or flare bevel groove. So on fillet welds you always have the perpendicular leg on the left side. There's That's just how it's drawn. You can't draw it the other way around. We'll get to that in a second. Welding symbol elements. Welding symbols have the basic list of items here. You're going to have a reference line. You're always going to have a reference line. Arrow. You're always going to have an arrow. But okay then we'll go through the rest of this stuff which sometimes you'll have it and sometimes you won't depending on what you're trying what information you're trying to convey to the workforce that's building this tail basic weld symbol dimensions and other data supplementary symbols finish symbols specification process or other references the joint is the basis of reference for welding symbols the reference line of the welding symbol is used to designate the type of weld to be made, its location, dimensions, extent, contour, and other supplementary information. Any welded joint indicated by a symbol will always have an arrow side and an other side. Accordingly, the terms arrow side, other side, and both sides are used here to locate the weld with respect to the joint. The red line here you can see is the reference line and the arrow. But this is a pretty standard sketch of you know all the information that can go into a welding symbol. So we're going to work our way through this stuff piece by piece. Here you can see an example of a welding symbol. This welding symbol has a fillet weld symbol on the reference line but this is an example of a welding symbol. Standard location of elements on a welding symbol. So this drawing is the Rosetta Stone, I guess you would call it, for standard locations of elements. If you have any questions about welding symbols, you should find a copy of this drawing or this uh, Here you can see the three basic components of a welding symbol. You've got the tail, the reference line, and the arrow. These are the three biggies. You don't necessarily need the tail. The tail can be omitted if you don't have any information from there, but every welding symbol needs a reference line and the arrow. These are mandatory. The reference line. The reference line is the main foundation for welding symbols used in blueprints. Anything written above the reference line itself indicates a weld on the other side of where the arrow points. Anything written below the reference line indicates a weld on the same side as the arrow points. The tail. The tail of the symbol is used for designating the welding and cutting processes as well as the welding specifications, procedures, or the supplementary information to be used in the making of the weld. If a welder knows the size and type of weld, he has only part of the information necessary for making the weld. 
the process, identification of the filler metal that is to be used, whether or not peening or root chipping is required, and other pertinent data must be related to the welder. The notation to be placed in the tail of the symbol indicating these data is to be established by each user. If notations are not used, the tail of the symbol may be omitted. Basic components of a welding symbol. The tail of a welding symbol is used to indicate welding or cutting processes as well as the welding specification procedures or supplementary information to be used in making the weld. So the tail is where if you have some god awful amount of information or very specific information that you want relayed to the foreman and the welder doing the work, you put it in the tail. Instead of trying to get the exact um, specific weld symbol and troubling over it. Sometimes it's easier to just tell them exactly what you want in the tail and line it out. See note 52. Do this. Or use welding procedure 53-29 GMAW7. Use this procedure. Don't use any other procedure. Use this procedure. So you can give them that information in the tail. Location significance of the arrow. Anything written above the reference line itself indicates a weld on the other side of where the arrow points. Anything written below the reference line indicates a weld on the same side as the arrow points. I know I've said this before, but I'm going to kind of approach it that nobody's seen this before, so we're just kind of going to roll that this way. That It's going to be real remedial, and you might hear the same thing over and over. Fillet welds. Fillet welds are triangular shaped welds that join two surfaces at right angles to each other in a lap joint, T joint, or corner joint. Fillet welds are the most common types of welds. You're going to see a lot of fillet welds in your day. This is there's no way around it, but there are it is the most common type of weld symbol you're going to see. Here's the same information with a picture. The fillet weld, other side. Remember we said anything written above the reference line indi itself indicates a weld on the other side of where the arrow points. The arrow is pointing to a corner there and the fillet weld symbol says you got to put a fillet weld on the other side. Anything written below the reference line indicates a weld on the same side as the arrow points. So we've got the arrow pointing to the same place as the last slide we saw, but now the fillet weld symbol is on the bottom. So that's telling us that it goes on the arrow side of the joint. Here the fillet weld symbol is above the reference line and below the reference line. So we will put one on the opposite side and we will put one on the arrow side. Here's another example of the size of fillet welds. As we've said before, the size of the fillet weld goes directly to the left of the fillet weld symbol. So for um, the top one, we've got the fillet weld symbol. We want a 5 16 inch weld, and that goes on the arrow side. Both legs, as you can see, are 5 16 of an inch. Then the middle weld symbol is a half inch fillet weld on both sides, both the arrow and the other side, the opposite side. So we've got half inch and half inch and we look at the legs of both of those welds and there are both legs of both welds are all half inch. Well then we get to the bottom weld symbol we want a half inch or a quarter inch weld on the opposite side and a three eighths inch weld on the arrow side. So if we looked over on the weld cross sections, that's what we get. So these are some examples of how you would size fillet welds. Here we can see a fillet weld symbol with the fillet weld having unequal leg lengths. So you can see we've got a three eighths by a quarter inch. Um, fillet weld. So they want the horizontal leg to be three-eighths of an inch and they want the vertical leg to be a quarter of an inch. And this is how you would designate it. And this is on the arrow side.
So here we've got a quarter inch fillet weld, six inches long. It doesn't designate a starting or a stopping point, but this is how you would designate it. And then on the sketch or the drawing, it would give you a start point, and then you would make the six inch weld from there. But here's what a quarter inch, six inch long looks like. You can see we've got the size of the fillet weld to the left hand side, and on the right hand side, we've got the length of the fillet weld. Dimensioning of fillet welds. Fillet weld size shall be specified to the left side of the weld symbol. So you can see here we've put in a fillet weld and just a generic S and it's for it's above the arrow, the reference line, so it's for the other side. And we've just got a generic S. So you're going to put a fillet weld on the other side of this symbol. Same drawing, same sketch. We just threw a number in there. We put a half inch, so you're going to put a half inch fillet on the other side of this weld, the opposite side of the arrow. So it's not arrow side, it's opposite side. Half inch weld for a fillet weld. Here's one of the other little idiosyncrasies of fillet welds. You can have unequal leg lengths. So you just put the dimensions there. So on this one I just threw in 5 eighths by 3 eighths. There's no nomenclature on which one is the upper leg or which one's which leg. You have to designate that on the drawing. So in this instance I've shown that I want this leg to be 5 eighths of an inch and the other one will be 3 eighths of an inch. You either have to put it in the tail as a note or you put it here as a, you know, show it somewhere in the drawing so that it, the people building the component know which leg is the 5 eighths inch leg and which leg is the 3 eighths inch leg. Fillet weld size shall be specified to the right side of the weld symbol. In this instance, if you're going to use a size and it's just the full length, you don't need to put anything else. If you only want it to run a certain length, then you need to put it on the drawing in some fashion that can be understood. Where to start and where to stop. Length of fillet welds. You can see that the length of fillet weld goes to the right of the fillet weld symbol on the welding symbol. So on this one you can see on the bottom we've got a fillet weld and it's 12 inches long. Well 12 units. So we're going to go with 12 inches long since how we're dealing with American units. And it's shown on the print as starting from three inches from that edge. So you start three inches from the edge and you make a 12 inch long weld. And that's what you need to do to comply with this welding symbol. Intermittent fillet welds. Okay, so on intermittent fillet welds we've got the dimension S which we already learned. That's the size of the fillet weld. Then now we're going to introduce L and P, which is length and pitch. Length is the length of the weld segment. You can see that in the lower right hand corner. I've got the weld segments as L. And then the P is the pitch, which is the distance between the center line of the adjacent segments. So you can have a lot of different variations here, but the nomenclature remains the same. You're going to have the size of the weld, which is to the left of the weld symbol. The first one coming off going to the right is the length of the weld. And then the pitch, the distance between the weld segments, is to the far right of the weld symbol. Intermittent fillet welds. Okay, here's some numbers given to the previous example where I just had L and P on there. 
You can see our fillet weld size, 3 8 It's to the left of the fillet weld symbol. And then to the right, I've got the first number is the L, which in this instance is 2. So we want our fillet weld segments to be 2 inches long. And then we've got a 4, which is the distance between the center line of the adjacent segments. So we're going to have a 3 8 inch weld, 2 inches long on 4 inch centers. This is the nomenclature for intermittent fillet welds. Here's an intermittent fillet weld. I've given some numbers to the example. So we've got 3 8 inch fillet welds, which is the number to the right, and they're 2 inch long segments and then they're going to be on four inch the pitch is going to be four inches which is the distance between the centers of the adjacent weld segments so this just puts some numbers to the definition that we gave you in the previous slide here you can see an example of an intermittent fillet weld it's a quarter inch sized fillet weld with two inch segment lengths at four inch center to center distance. So you can see that over on our sketch we've got two inch long segments and then from the center line to the center line of the segments it's four inches. And you can notice that the fillet weld leg lengths are both one quarter of an inch. Here's an example of a staggered intermittent fillet weld. So we've got three at 10 inches. It doesn't give us the size of the fillet weld, it's just giving us the length and the pitch. So the length is going to be 3 inches long, so that's the length of our fillet weld segments. And then it, they're going to be spaced at 10 inches long. So on the side that you're welding on, which in this case is both, the distance between adjacent segments is going to be 10 but then they're going to be staggered. So the distance between segments on opposite sides of the member that you're welding to, it's going to be five. So you can see that from the dimensions of the weld that are shown on this sketch. That's what a staggered intermittent fillet weld looks like. Staggered intermittent fillet welds. Dimensions of staggered intermittent fillet welds shall be specified on both sides of the reference line, and the fillet weld symbol shall be offset on opposite sides of the reference line as shown below. The segments of staggered intermittent fillet welds shall be symmetrically spaced on both sides of the joint. So you can see we've got the size of the fillet weld shown, and then we've got the length and the pitch shown to the right. But then you notice that the two symbols do not line up for the fillet welds. They're staggered. So that's telling us it's a staggered intermittent fillet weld. So then the segments of the staggered intermittent fillet weld shall be symmetrically spaced on both sides of the joint. So you don't have a randomness. Both sides of the weld have the same size weld on them and they're staggered intermittently obviously it's a staggered intermittent weld but the weld shall be symmetrically spaced on both sides of the joint so the spacing on both sides of the joint is the same you can see I've got the pitch on both sides of the joint are the same as well as the length of the fillet weld segments are the same intermittent fillet welds Okay, so on intermittent fillet welds, we've got the dimension S, which we already learned. That's the size of the fillet weld. Then, now we're going to introduce L and P, which is length and pitch. Length is the length of the weld segment. You can see that in the lower right-hand corner. I've got the weld segments as L. And then... The P is the pitch, which is the distance between the center line of the adjacent segments. So 
you can have a lot of different variations here, but the nomenclature remains the same. You're going to have the size of the weld, which is to the left of the weld symbol. The first one coming off going to the right is the length of the weld, and then the pitch, the distance between the weld segments, is to the far right of the weld symbol. Chain intermittent fillet welds. Dimensions of chain intermittent fillet welds shall be specified on both sides of the reference line. The segments of chain intermittent fillet welds shall be opposite one another across the joint. So my sketch down at the bottom is a little tweaked, um, not to scale obviously, but you can see that in a chain intermittent fillet weld, the welds are directly opposite each other. They are not staggered like a staggered intermittent fillet weld. They're directly across from each other. And it follows the same nomenclature as a regular intermittent fillet weld. Except now you're just on both sides of the, of the member, not just one side. So that's the difference between an intermittent fillet weld and a chain intermittent fillet weld. And then the staggered you would stagger the, uh, the weld segments across the weld as opposed to here they are directly opposite one another. So and we use, still use the same nomenclature the L and the P and the you know for the length and the pitch and the S is the size of the fillet weld. Nothing has changed there. Here you can see we're going to do a chain intermittent fillet weld. So with a chain intermittent fillet weld you're just using a length and a pitch for that fillet weld. In these ones we don't have any size for the fillet weld but you can see on the top one it's just two inch weld on four inch centers. The first dimension is the dimension of how long you want the weld to be, the fillet weld to be the second dimension is the distance between the centers of the welds. So we've got a two inch weld on four inch centers. And then that's just one side. So that's telling you it's not arrow side, it's the other side. And then the lower um, sketch shows us that we want two inch fillet weld or two inch long fillet weld on four inch centers both sides of the weld. So these are chain intermittent fillet welds. Symbol dimensions. Tolerances, if required, are to be placed in the tail. Welding symbols are usually drawn without dimensional units such as inches or millimeters. But welding symbols to be used for publications or those requiring high precision should be dimensioned and have the dimensional tolerances noted within the tails. On this slide we can see supplementary symbols that you're probably going to run across at some point in your career in regards to welding symbols. Weld all around, field weld, melt through, consumable insert depending on your where you're working and what you're working on could be a significant part of your day. I haven't dealt with consumable inserts that much. Contour, flush, flat, convex, concave, those are supplementary um, symbols that you're going to probably run across at some point. Somebody's going to want to weld uh, contour, ground, flush, or flat. The weld all around symbol, here's how you would use it. A couple of examples where you would be welding a piece of square tubing to a base plate and you'd use a weld all around symbol to put a fillet weld all the way around it. And then the example on the lower right hand side is a, a beam, a structural beam welded to a base plate and you're using a fillet weld on that one too to weld the um, beam to the base plate. Here are a couple more examples of welds 
needing a weld all around symbol where you would be welding something that on the top one you have that view section AA and then you just do a weld all around on that one to make sure that you've um, securely joined that to the um, other member and then in the bottom instance you've got a shaft it's like weld all around on a shaft so you're using a um, you're putting in a groove weld, a single sided groove weld, and then you're doing a um, fillet weld on top of that. So you can see the configuration that you end up with. Weld all around symbol. Here you can see they're using the tail to specify a seal weld. Hey, just put an eighth inch seal weld around this thing, seal it up. That's all we're asking for. Things like that can be used in the tail. Seal welds or um, grind flush, although there's symbols for that, but you can tell them exactly what you want. Just put it in the tail. Gives them a little head start on what you, you were thinking. A chain intermittent weld is a fillet weld that is on both sides of the fillet, but they're intermittent. So here you can see to the right of the fillet weld symbol, we've got a two and a four. The two is the length of the weld segment, and four is the pitch, which is the distance between the two segments, the two adjacent segments. So that's how you read a chain intermittent fillet weld. And then we've got a staggered intermittent fillet weld in which we've got the weld segment length in this instance is three and the pitch between the segments on each side is ten so then you stagger those from side to side so that the distance between the two on each side is half the distance of the pitch On this slide you can see that there's a call out for um, the fillet weld to be ground flat so they didn't want a convex or a concave surface finish on this they wanted the surface contour to be ground flat and that is designated by the G you can also have an M or various other um, symbols signifying how you want that finished the weld tail can specify the final contour of the weld as well as any additional processing steps required to achieve the contour. So you can put grind in there, chipping, hammering, machining, rolling, or unspecified. If you want that thing machined, put a big M on it. If you want it ground, flush, put a G on there. U, unspecified. We just want it flush. Just get it flat. You can machine it grind it, chip it, whatever. So that's what the the line with a letter over it means. So you, you can give them what they need. Sometimes if you're putting equipment in, you can't have a big amount, a large amount of weld reinforcement. You need that thing ground flush. So they'll grind it flush so a piece of equipment will fit there because maybe a eighth or three sixteenths of an inch of weld material will throw everything off. And you run into this, like I said, when you start dealing with equipment, pumps, turbines, things like that is where I've run across this, where you need to start mounting things. You're going to need them ground flush. Flush and convex contour symbols. Weld cross-section you know approximately flush you're just saying you put that line there and that you want it flush um, you can put reinforcement removed by chipping that's a C um, then you can put the you know other side flush contour symbol or you can use both sides convex contour symbol you know I want them both con contoured into a convex shape and I want them ground. So that's 
where you relay the people the information to do that. So these are additional pieces of information that could be relayed on to welders. Flush and convex contour symbols. Here's an example of a combined groove and fillet weld. You can see that on both sides we're going to get a quarter of an inch groove weld, a quarter of an inch deep, and then it's going to be nine sixteenths of an inch of penetration is what they're looking for. And then we've got a three eighths of an inch leg both legs on the fillet weld are going to be three-eighths of an inch um, to bring this thing out. So this is what a combination groove and fillet weld looks like. Typical weld symbols using the tail. As I've said before, generally if you have anything extra to throw into a weld symbol, throw it in in the tail. And typical if you want something repeated is the perfect place to put it is in the tail so in in this one you can see they're welding some I think they're stiffener plates into this girder that they're making and you have um, at the end of the weld symbol in the tail you have typical um, each end two flanges so that's telling you on the end flanges you're gonna do um, uh, a bevel groove weld with a 3 8 inch fillet and then on the other side you're going to have a 3 8 inch fillet and then for the stiffeners it's going to tell you it says typical four pair of stiffeners and it tells you how to weld those stiffeners it gives you the you know typical both flanges it's it's telling you how to weld those those flanges so that you don't have to have weld symbols everywhere you can just have one weld symbol and say okay do the other three um, components that are structured like this just like this one so hope this um, wasn't too long but we're covered a lot of ground in regards to welding uh, symbols fillet welds etc um, take care questions comments whatever here's my contact information Gary Pace PECWI Katie Texas um, email address and my website. Well, if you got any questions, fire away. I generally answer them within a few days. So give me a shout.